I, I want to briefly uh, go over just a few points today with you. I'm going to talk about um, the biblical mandate, the man, and the mission. And uh, I had Robert recently in my home for almost two weeks in uh, the United States, and we did uh, nearly 20 interviews on all kinds of Christian television, secular television all around the nation. He spoke at several uh, audiences, and as we began to unravel the Negev High Tech Project, which is a fulfillment of Ezekiel 36, we're watching prophetic things happen right before our eyes right now, especially in the Negev, as Israel is being restored, just as the ancient scriptures have said from times before through the prophets, that Israel will be restored, Jerusalem would be restored, and the people would be restored, and we're seeing that through Aliyah. The Negev is going to blossom like a desert, according to Ezekiel 36, and uh, Robert is a, is a man that God has laid this vision upon. You know, there are things, there are times when um, uh, God chooses through a covenant-aligned access to give the grace of God to a man to carry out a dimension of himself to bring light to a nation and the nations. I firmly believe that Robert Ilatoff has been guided by the hand of God and that he has been engraced. Paul talks about it in Ephesians 3, 3 and 5. He says, by the grace of God, I've been given the mysteries to unlock the, the mysteries of the kingdom of the word to bring light. We see that in Genesis 28 where Jacob brings the light to the land. And so I believe that there are periods of time, dispensation of time, by God's grace, that he allows a man who has a covenant aligned relationship with him to understand his assignment, his mission. He aligns him properly. And I can truly say that Robert Ilatoff, if you know his background, and I won't get into all of it here today, but I believe he's been prepared, uh, protected, positioned, and promoted by the very hand of God for this Negev high tech project. And in his time of 13 years in the Knesset, holding several committee heads of, of economic affairs, foreign affairs, and so many different committees in the Knesset, and being an advisor to Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, God has positioned him, and I believe called him for this moment in time, specifically for the Negev project. We went down together to the Negev earlier this week, and we filmed, we anointed the land, we anointed Robert, we prayed over the land, we prayed over Robert, and so it is a joy uh, uh, of, of mine to be able to join the Negev High Tech Project Board and to work with what God is bringing to the Negev. We have about five companies right now that are positioned ready to come with water, agriculture, high technology, housing, national security issues, all kinds of things, everything from chip manufacturing to robotics to medicine, all kinds of things that you're gonna be hearing about in the upcoming days through this new mission that God has given, the Arad Research and Innovation Center, which I'm gonna let Robert talk about in just a minute. When Robert was with me, we were driving in the car the other day, and uh, I started uh, praying in the spirit, and he said, what language are you speaking? And I said, I'm speaking in tongues, and so, <laughs> uh, uh, I may have to do that today to get through all the materials that we have here. Teasing. But um, the Bible says in Amos 8, 11, let me just go here quickly. The Bible says in Amos 8, 11, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. You know, I believe that as we saw in Genesis in the chapters of 41 through 47, this famine that Joseph administered where he fed the whole world, I believe that Israel, coming from the Negev once again and from Jerusalem and from all parts of Israel, Israel will once again feed the world. 
This is what makes it so insane to think that the BDS and the delegitimization of Israel and the anti-Semitism that's, that's happening now, one day that will back, backflow on all those because they, they need the food. I, I think in Europe now, 60 to 80% of the fruits and vegetables that are coming into those nations are actually coming from Israel. But there's something more than just physical food coming from Israel. It's the very thing, the bread of heaven, the manna from heaven that feeds our soul because the scripture says man cannot live by bread alone, but by the very word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So I believe not only will Israel feed the world physically, but Israel will once again steward the word of God, the hope of glory to all the nations. In fact, Isaiah 8, 20 and 21 says, to the teaching and to the testimony, if they will not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn. They will pass through the land greatly distressed and hungry. And when they are hungry, they will be enraged and will speak contemptuously against their king and their God and turn their faces upward. I'm telling you, there's a day when Israel will become the nation of nations and it's happening even now as we speak. As the whole world stands against Israel, us Gentile Christians are doing the Ruth Naomi story. We are saying we're not leaving you. We're, we're going where you're going. Your God is our God. We'll die with you. We're standing with you. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. We're standing with them. Israel is known as a startup nation. I just want to tell you a few things before I pass it to Robert. These are some of the things over the years that that Israel has blessed the world with. Number one, a cell phone was developed in Israel by Israel's working in the Israeli branch of Motorola, which has its largest development center in Israel. Most of the Windows NT and XP operating systems were developed by Microsoft Israel. Remember those big brick phones? Now we have these iPhones. Re relative to its population, Israel is the largest immigrant absorbing nation on earth. Immigrants come in search of democracy, religious freedom, and economic opportunity. We also are going to be seeing eventually up to 750,000 to a million people coming to the Negev with housing, economic development, opportunities for families, and jobs, and this is going to be an incredible resurgence of Israel leading the way in technology and services throughout the world. In 1984-91, Israel airlifted a total of 22,000 Ethiopian Jews in Ethiopia to safety in Israel. That Aliyah is continuing even today. Last year, I think, Robert, you said that over 70,000 came. Is that fair? Yeah. An Israeli company developed a computerized system ensuring proper administrations for medications, thus removing human error from medical treatment. Every year in U.S. hospitals, 7,000 patients die from these type of treatment mistakes. Medicine, Israeli scientists developed the first fully computerized non-radiation diagnostic instrumentation for breast cancer. And I could go on and on and on of hundreds of innovations coming out of Israel. But we're going to see AI, robotics, uh, national security issues, all kinds of things come out of this new research and innovation center where young people from around the world will come here not only to start a family, but to do research and innovate. I think that for every single engineer that comes, it creates four jobs. And so we're gonna see economic development, we're going to see a prospering of the Negev, and it's going to blossom like a desert once again with agriculture, fresh water. We have uh, water companies that are coming with new uh, technologies that have actually just uh, proprietary patented technologies. They've already partnered with militaries and it's, it's gonna be fascinating. So I, I wanted to uh, just talk very briefly about the place of the Jewish nation in Bible prophecy. Because what we're seeing happen in the Negev through, I believe, one of God's servants who's been prepared, Robert. Great and mighty things that we know not yet are about to happen. In Genesis 17, six and eight, it says, I will make exceeding, the exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in the generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee, and I will give unto thee unto thy seed after thee in the land where, 
wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Hallelujah. I, I wanted to just now introduce Robert to you. When he came to my home, I didn't know Robert that well. We've met seven years ago at the founding Jerusalem prayer breakfast. But you don't really know someone until they live in your house for a few weeks. I, I, I really have come to appreciate this man. You know, the Word of God is a four-course meal. It says the Word of God is milk, bread, meat, and honey. And when we intake that four-course meal, and we wash it down by the washing of the water of the Word with a little bit of spirit, uh, that begins to take root. And the Lord said to me, I want to come and have supper with you. I want to dine with you. And I said, well, what would I serve the Lord if he came to my house? And I looked in the cupboards and I thought, he wouldn't want any of this. And then the Holy Spirit hit me and he said, he wants the fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so I said to the Lord that day, oh God, may your word ingest in me and may it take root so that the fruit of your spirit would come forth. And then he comes and picks the fruit and he eats that. And we, we dine together, we have communion together. And so I've learned with Robert, all of those fruits of the spirit are in him. Joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, meekness, humility. I've come to know a man that I've loved now as a brother. We, we share the same father. We're two different branches on the vine but we have come together for the purposes of God's kingdom and the, and the coming of Messiah back to a land that is going to be fruitful. It will multiply and supply all the nations. And so with that said, I want to thank Robert, this tender-hearted man that I've come to know and love, uh, to talk about the Arad Research and Innovation Facility and what God is doing. We're entering phase one now. It's about a $120 million project. You can see all of it on the website, negativehightech.com, and the architectural renderings and the buildings and all the things that are gonna be happening. But this is more than just a research innovation facility. This is a prophetic unfolding of God's prophetic word happening right here in the land. Robert. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you about uh, warm words about me, about project. Uh, first, uh, I would like to tell about, a little bit about uh, high tech and startups and the biblical connection to Negev. The first stopper, uh, far, uh, start upper was uh, Abraham. He came with the idea and the belief in one God. And uh, this is very close to what's happening today with startups. We, you, you come with idea, you're telling the story, and the people investing you. So he started this idea in the Negev. Uh, the belief in one God started in Beersheba and Hebron, and you can read it in the Bible. So the connection of the Jewish people of the Bible to this uh, land, it's... Uh, biblical connection, it's a historical connection of the Jewish uh, people. And we started in the desert, uh, our belief and uh, all what we started with our uh, roots. Uh, all our roots are in, in the Negev desert. It starts in Beersheba. Uh, so from Beersheba to Hebron, uh, the Abram and his family uh, wo walked in the Negev years. So uh, it's very important to be uh, there in the Negev from the, uh, not only of political reasons, it's uh, even from the biblical reasons, it's very important that Jews will come to the desert and the desert will bloom. It's written in the Bible, so we have to do it. Uh, you know, uh, 120 years ago, nobody believes that uh, the Jewish state uh, will be established, but we did it because of uh, journalists, Theodor Herzl, who decided to establish a, a, 
Zionist movement and Zionist movement established this Jewish state. So all these miracles happening and uh, the, this, the prophecy of the Bible. So we have to go to the desert and we have to, to do uh, actions to make a desert bloom. And uh, of course, we are speaking about Zionism movement. What is Zionism? Zionism is one, uh, Zion, it's one of the name of uh, Jerusalem and the Zionist movement is to rebuild Jerusalem, rebuild all these uh, lands around Jerusalem uh, and to establish the Jewish state. So uh, we see today that many politician uh, parties go into the crisis and uh, fighting each other about jurisdiction. Uh, reform, other reforms, political position, ideology. And uh, we see that less and less people uh, try to do the right thing and to make Aliyah, to support Aliyah, to make the settlements, to support settlements. So uh, this is the point we are Jews and Christians can enter and to promote it because when we see the BDS movement and the uh, terrorism and the uh, Iranian uh, nuclear programs, w all these streets uh, frighten in the Israel, but how we can fight uh, against it? It's not only military fight. We have to invest, what is uh, BDS movement? Boycott, the investment and sanctions. We have to do the opposite things. We have to invest to build and to bless Israel. This is the right opposite uh, position what we have to do. So, uh, two things. Uh, it's very basic uh, things that uh, Zionism movement uh, was established. It's Aliyah, the return to the motherland, and the settlement. Settlement in the motherland. So, this is two very important things. And, uh, this is two, imp these two important things we are speaking about Negev project. We are speaking about Aliyah and we are speaking about settlement because this area, the, um, it's uh, the, the, the big area as the Jerusalem area, uh, the, the same uh, territory of uh, municipality. And uh, in Jerusalem lives one million people why we can uh, bring to the desert one million people to give them jobs, to give them uh, uh, apartments, to give them uh, uh, education for their kids. We can do it. It's possible to do it, but we have to act, not only uh, to pray or to speak about that. So the idea is to bring people who uh, can join to this uh, idea and to try uh, to do things, to act, to, to do actions, to bring more and more people who would like to support Aliyah, to support people. Uh, why I'm talking about it? Because uh, we see the big wave of Aliyah last year. It was 70,000 people. It's good news. And bad news is 30% of that people leaves the country uh, less than one year because they can't find the jobs. It's very expensive life here. There is no housing. So to, to make the difference, to, uh, to give them the opportunity to stay in Israel, it's to uh, invest in infrastructures of education, of the jobs, of the uh, creating uh, new company startups that are growing very uh, fast and uh, can bring uh, investments uh, because uh, uh, Israeli have good ideas, good products and uh, many uh, countries in the world and investors in the world would like to invest to this project. So the idea, the vision of this project uh, is to bring uh, the engine of uh, education, of uh, research, of uh, startup companies, on investing companies to Arad and to start developing this e area 
to, to bring a new families, a new Olim uh, Chadashim, newcomers to Israel, and to help them to stay in Israel. This is the, the vision of the project. Of course, uh, we have very uh, clear plan of how we would like to establish uh, funds and how we would like to, to build the center and uh, whom we would like to see as a researchers in the center and which school we would like to uh, create there and uh, many other things. Uh, we don't have enough time, but of course, uh, everybody who wants uh, to see and to learn about this project can be touching with me and uh, I'll be very happy to explain all the position. Of course, as I said, uh, in this uh, stage, uh, uh, we are uh, looking for uh, partners, uh, people who can uh, help us to organize uh, fundraising, to, to bring the information to uh, big uh, numbers of people, to explain them why uh, this project is very uh, uh, important for Israel. It's not important only for Olim Hadashim, for the newcomers, it's important for Israeli security because it's creating a new jobs, it's creating new uh, ideas, uh, it's bring uh, to the area uh, researchers and uh, it's helped uh, to uh, many, many fields uh, in uh, uh, agriculture, water, clean tech, uh, every, every tech you want uh, we have in Israel. So, uh, the idea to bring uh, very smart and clever people and young people and newcomers to Negev, it's idea, it's not my idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it's idea of Ben Gurion and it's idea of Avram and it's idea of all uh, these, uh, uh, our leaders that uh, uh, have been uh, in our history and the Negev is the part of the uh, of our history of Bible and I'll be very glad and happy if uh, people who uh, spend with us time here in Jerusalem prayer breakfast will join us and help us uh, to create uh, this uh, very important project for the state of Israel. Amen. I have uh, I made some notes here at age 99 you talk about Abraham. Abraham received from God these instructions nearly 4,000 years ago. And today these promises that were given to Abraham so many generations ago, even though they're still being debated, however, in order to clearly understand this time that we live in, we must understand certain prophecies relating to Israel and the, these days. Like the men of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, we must understand the times and seasons that we're living in. So. I wanted to talk about just a couple of scriptures here, and then I, I wanna highlight some of the companies that we're gonna be bringing here because we're going to be able to generate water from the atmosphere that could be used on several different levels for fertilizing, for, for crop yield increase, for chip making, for drinking, for all kinds of things. And we can bring the water out of the atmosphere and store it. And it, it's an incredible new Genesis type technology that has several patents pending. We've been speaking at the United Nations Water Conference and conferences all over the world. And the nations now are lining up for this new technology that's about to go into production and we're bringing it here to Israel. Not to mention some agricultural yield new technologies that can increase the crop yields of uh, organic food from eight hours of sunlight a day to 18 hours of sunlight a day, and we can increase food production exponentially for export. And uh, housing, we have technologies, advanced Rankin cycle systems. This is an alternative energy technology now whereby we don't need um, utility companies. We can actually pull energy out of the atmosphere, store it, and use it. This unit can be on several different sizes, one in your home, one in a facility for a region or a city. And we're now deploying some of these technologies now. We have a new wireless communication technology that is deployable now. It's 25% of the cost of 5G. We don't need fiber, we don't need 
uh, 5G antennas and cell towers around the world anymore. We have a new technology that can save us from these emitting uh, radio uh, frequencies that do so much harm. So there are new technologies totally off the grid whereby we can literally go into the desert and generate water, agriculture, and energy off the grid in a sustainable home that can do great things for people that they don't have to have all of this infrastructure. And for many nations, this is going to be crucial. In India alone, over 70% of the population does not have clean running water. We can now take that to India. We're working with India now on this technology and other nations. 42 nations have lined up for some of these things. And we're going to be bringing that to Israel here, building a, a scalable uh, city that can then be replicated around the world coming from Israel. So just think of the possibilities. And when you begin to see and understand the technologies that are coming forth from this project, it's going to be life changing. And of course, uh, if we are speaking about a uh, project that uh, life changing, we are speaking about uh, the warming of the globe. And uh, we need to start research how we develop the desert. So we can start it from the Negev desert. Because this is the most important uh, question in the world today, the warming of the globe. So uh, our, our center can be the pioneer of that uh, uh, item and uh, we can bring new ideas. And of course, uh, we can see that Israel began more and more green and other countries became more and more uh, deserts. So uh, this is maybe, uh, this is a new thing that we can bring to the world and uh, to show how we can uh, make this world be more green. And uh, uh, the Negev project, I think it will be a pioneer of, of this field. Absolutely, and it's an honor to work with you. We have, we have a place on the website called Trust Bridge. It's, on, uh, it's how you give money. It goes through the account in Switzerland, and so people from all around the world can give to that. Um, I wanted to mention just a couple of these scriptures. Do I have time to do that? It says, uh, throughout scripture, God describes how the children of Israel eventually would return to the promised land in the last days and rebuild, rebuild the land of Israel. The prophet Hosea stated in chapter 3, 4, and 5, for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image, and without an ephod and without tephrim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. And again in Ezekiel, as stated in chapter 37, 21, and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And so these prophecies given over 2,500 centuries ago clearly stated that someday in the future, and I believe we're in that day now, the children of Israel would return from the nations of their land to Israel. I believe the restitution of all things is stated in Acts 3.19, going back to the end from the beginning. We're going to go back to the beginning at the end. And so we're going to see an Acts 2 church revived, we're going to see persecution come with some of that, which quickly could turn into prosecution. But we're going to see the glory of the Lord manifested in new ways. In Leviticus 9, 23 and 24, it talks about Aaron and Moses giving the burnt sacrifices. And it says there, the glory of the Lord came and all saw it and fell on their faces before him. I believe that we're going to see the glory of the Lord arise in these last days. And the Negev project I call I call it personally the Joseph Mandate, and it centers around five principles. Number one, national planning. Number two, public diplomacy. Number three, sound theological, biblical doctrine. They don't care about your doctrine if their children are dying of dysentery or starvation. But with sound doctrine, standing with Israel against BDS, against anti-Semitism, and against this delegitimization of the nation of Israel, we must stand with Israel. 
And finally, number five, we have to stop the human rights abuses. If you're a nation that's going to receive all the benefits that Israel can export and bring to you, you're going to have to stop the human rights abuses and stand with Israel. And God will bless your land when you do that. And so uh, go to high tech, uh, negativehitech.com. Go to Trustbridge. You can give your house, your car, and all your money to the... <laughs> to the organization, I'm just teasing, but you can donate uh, hard assets as well, so. Um, Thank you, Kevin. We are just in time. Okay. <laughs>